If I'm overthinking, I'm really trying, so I should stop it. So hard on myself, it's true. Pick apart the things I do. I've been in hiding, backsliding, keep rewinding, pulling the thread through the loop, trying to find the faith I knew. I hope you just click through the subscribe button below and join the farm. I just woke up. You cannot tell from my swollen face and eyes, but we are here in Karaba for the batch two training of some of the beneficiaries. So all of us, because of COVID reasons, we have had to be like in the hotel. We are all in the hotel, like the staff and the beneficiaries. You know, everybody is just here, and um, nobody is allowed to go out conducting social distance, everybody is safe, you know, there are points for washing hands um, around the hotel, everybody has their face masks or face shields and sanitizers like all day. <laughs> the seven fifty I just called them not to get me what's what happened in the kitchen and also come a bit of my clothes for dry cleaning so we'll see what time they get here because just sometimes you ask them to come with something they will <laughs> do. Yes. All right. So anyway, I just want to say that I'm proud of this job because I, every time I come for something like this and I see the beneficiaries and like the fact that they are actually getting impacted by this training and the fact that they can see their lives going so. I quickly give you guys a rundown of like my educational background, like um, my career after I was done with secondary school. Okay, secondary school, I always wanted to be a pediatrician because I loved children, but then chemistry was not my friend, it wasn't so. But thanks to my dad, like my dad's advice, so I switched to commercial and I could have my love for like economics and finance started. I work as, a, as an accountant, and this is my dream job, like, I am so passionate about finance. So for my BSc, I studied but um, economics. I have a BSc, I have a bachelor's in economics. When I was done, I finished in 2011, and I um, I served in 2012. So when I served, I always followed my mom to the office. So like I loved that work setting. So my dream was to finish school, come out, get a nine to five, and get a stable salary. Like I love going to a nine to five job. I know that when I go to work. You know, I'm done for that day, then the next day, like, I don't mind the monotony, like, yeah. <laughs> I still love my 9 to 5, I say it all the time, I'm blessed to have it. And I got retained at this job um, in 2014, I took, in 2014, I took study leave, I went to the University of Ghana, I financed myself, <laughs> I studied development um, finance, so I have a master's in development finance. Um, so like this is just basically, like, like basically building my like career in finance and I came back to continue working and like now I'm 
I really had to sit and think. I didn't just didn't just click to me like that. So, but I was like, do I really really want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, I do enjoy doing this. I, I don't want a switch in career. So um, everything I do now, because I'm passionate about it. Like YouTube, like I said, YouTube is bringing me out of like my shyness and humility. And also because I love making videos, I love capturing moments, I love taking pictures. So. That's why I'm doing this right now, and then this job I'm doing as well, it's my passion. I really sat down and I thought about it, and I'm like, yeah, this is what I want to do. So, I'm doing it. <laughs> The day is almost over and I'm still downstairs working but I realized that it's already getting dark and I wanted to sign up from the vlog before the lighting gets horrible. Um, but I, that, I just wanted to just like um, brief you guys about like what I do and like my work life. I I have goals to attain. I'm not saying oh like I'm too young. You're never too old to attain your career goals. You're never too young to start attaining your career goals. Like there's no nobody has set any age. If anybody's making you feel bad about yourself that oh you haven't achieved this and you're this age, like mm -mm. don't. I'm thankful to God for where I am. I don't take it for granted, number one, as a Nigerian. Like, I don't know how things are, are tough in this country. I'm thankful to God, first of all, to be able to get a job that is directly linked to what I studied and what I'm passionate about. And I do not take it for granted, like, at all. And today, I just want to use this video to inspire you to go out there and, like, start. And first of all, do not give up on yourself and don't give up on God that your dreams. And don't give up on God that your dreams and the things that you believe you want for yourself will come to Okay. But for layers, they don't they don't sell egg here in the farm. Mm. They take them straight to Calabar. Okay. And, mm, in the evening, like you see the truck coming to carry the eggs straight to Calabar. Oh. So welcome to Obasi Farm. It's located in Akampa Cross River State, Calabar. Um, it has nine. It's one of the largest poultry farms in Cross River State. And it has as you can see it has nine pens and each pen contains about nineteen thousand birds. Oh, wow, that, that's a lot. Um so we are here with the beneficiaries, we are taking them through um poultry farming, the necessary hygiene tips, um how to gather the eggs, you know, without endangering the lives of the birds and the lives and safety of the birds 
and um, without breaking the eggs, like being careful with the eggs. So, this is pretty cool. Like, it's really amazing. What are you doing, Annie? I'm vlogging. You are doing another TV camera. <laughs> <laughs> you are going back? No, we want to check out that group. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me see this. Okay. Well done. Doctor, well done. Well done. It's great. <laughs> well done, oh, yeah. How are you? I know how you're obese today. Okay. I trust you. <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are great. You're a great governor.